G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. We do lots of analysis into periods and events, what happened, who were the main characters and why did things turn out the way that they did. We do reviews into other people's gear, we do lots of examination into what was happening at the time. We do uh, lots of DIY videos and crafting videos into costuming and furniture. And today's video, we're going to look at what a noble person might have eaten during the medieval period. So just recently I did a video looking at uh, what a peasant may have eaten. A fairly senior peasant, that being uh, a low-born free person who may have been someone like a stonemason or a weaponsmith blacksmith, these kind of people, people living uh, very arduous lives and requiring high amounts of energy and protein in their diet in order to do their job. And it would have been in a noble's interest to make sure those people got the food that they required so that they had the energy to do their job. There's absolutely no sense whatsoever in starving your peasants because all of a sudden the very things that you require these people to do they could no longer physically do. However, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at what a noble person may have eaten. Now in relation to uh, some questions that were raised during the last video, so we're looking at England in around about the 11th, 12th centuries, and we're looking at Sussex in particular. Why Sussex? Well, it's such an interesting place. I've been there many, many, many times. It's a really, really joyous place to be, uh, and so much happened there. Uh, some really, really big key events, and we'll be looking at those hopefully later on this year. Uh, so, noble person, what may have they been eating? Right, during my reenactment periods, what I tend to do is look at a junior noble, so uh, a, basically a knight. Uh, I have a group of uh, enthusiasts that work with me that uh, essentially fulfill the roles of my retainers, uh, that being sort of um, animal handlers, uh, I have a squire, I have all sorts of people that around me that would help uh, fulfill real uh, functions during the medieval period. So in relation to these questions, some of the really important things to understand is that there were very big differences at different points during the medieval period as to what someone may have eaten. There were also incredibly big differences in terms of where they were in ter uh, as regards to geography uh, because that would have changed things. So if someone obviously closer to the coast would have eaten a diet much higher in fish. Same same for people who lived near big rivers. Uh, there were The large majority of the population in medieval England at this time lived in the countryside. Small villages, farming communities, rural communities, trading communities, not so much in the big cities. They really, uh, the, the, the cities themselves only had populations in sort of the low 10,000. Uh, the main city, obviously London, uh, Leicester was a very small city, Birmingham, again, really had a very small population, something like, uh, from memory, 6,000, 7,000 people, really not that many people at all. So th towns like uh, Manchester, Liverpool, uh, and, and so on, really wouldn't have been very big at all. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at what some of the foods are and what were the differences between a noble's food and a peasant's food looks very similar on the surface. Once again, could be drinking ale or mead or water would depend upon where they were when they were. I'm just going to put this down before I spill it. Okay, so there's a big misconception in the uh, historical communities uh, that, that seems to live on that everyone drank ale. Not true. Um, people did drink water, but people also had an understanding that water could make you sick and kill you. Uh, so during the harrowing of the north, for example, William the Conqueror, according to the Doomsday Book, starved or poisoned over a hundred thousand people. Given the um, what we were just talking about, about populations in cities, this was a fundamentally massive portion of the Saxon uh, population had been essentially ethnically cleansed. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video another time. Um, William the Conqueror is, a, is an incredibly interesting person, a very dynamic person. Um, I also think a very, you know, ultimately and obviously an incredibly gifted warrior uh, and, and a very, you know, strong tactician. Uh, 
not necessarily very high on ethics and morals, but however. Uh, right, let's go back to what we were talking about in terms of food. So could have been drinking mead, ale, a type of beer, um, wine, as in mead, or water. Um, we know from archaeological finds all throughout the UK that mead was something that was traded extensively. You only needed to look at the herbs and spices uh, that retained into the pottery. So, for example, if you look at Cabri Hill, uh, there is a, a large, um, a large longhouse type structure there, a great hall that had obviously been built somewhere around the fifth and sixth century. Uh, I realise different time period fundamentally different time period. However, the essential um, comparison here is the same, and, and this is a really good example of what to use. So around this, this site has been found thousands of fragments of pottery, and we know that by analysis of this pottery that uh, it contained uh, spices and herbs and so on that came from places like Italy and what is today the Middle East and today even potentially the Far East. So this was the trade network that was uh, in, in function at the time. This was right back in sort of 7th and 8th centuries, but still existed right throughout time, um, going through places like Constantinople and so on. So that was definitely possible, but obviously to, um, to drink that kind of um, mead or wine, you would have to have the money to afford it and therefore you would need to be a noble at that time. Let's take a look at the actual food itself. Okay, once again we have bread. Very different bread this time. This is a white bread. So again, a huge determiner of medieval status would be bread. A range of cheeses, chopped apple, in this case raspberries, We've also got um, ham again, pork being one of the mainstay types of protein available to people who lived in the farming communities and so on. Uh, we also have olives. Olives definitely were consumed in England at this time and we know that through a whole range of archaeological finds from places like York and uh, Leicester in, in the whole kind of modern day Leicestershire type communities and so on which have been, been dug up. Um, apple definitely uh, and interestingly there are many places in England uh, around about 15 or so that I know of where the place names are, have apple in them and this was a mustering point or a travelling point for the Saxon fjords at the time so what that means was the, uh, the militia of the day in the Saxon time was called the fjord and uh, they were basically an army comprised of uh, working class people and because to be a Saxon meant you had to be a warrior as well if you were a man. That was it. End of story. The end. Um, so the fjord uh, would know where they were. Maps weren't a thing, they just didn't have maps, but they knew landmarks and so having apple trees and so on gave them a good indication of exactly where they were and also a really good way to be able to provide themselves with food on the way between places. Alrighty guys, well I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd really love to hear your comments and your thoughts. Please leave a comment below. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm learning as much as everybody else here. Uh, I'm not a qualified historian, but simply someone who's very enthusiastic and very passionate about the, um, the, the historical aspects of our lives and where did we come from and how did we get to where we are today actually comes a lot through history. Please like, subscribe and share the video. Very, very interested to see how far we can go. Um, I think this is a really good subject to look at what people may have eaten at them in the medieval period. As I say, we're talking about Sussex, England, 11th, 12th type centuries here. Uh, and I think this is a pretty reasonable example. For those of you who are in the SCA, that is the Society of Creative Anarchism, our, or the LARPing communities, role playing groups and so on, this is a really simple meal that you can make up for yourself to be able to uh, reenact uh, a very credible uh, part of the day for those people who want to play uh, nobles and that kind of thing. Uh, alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.